friends welcome back to my channel if we haven't met i'm mikkel and i am thankful for you even though i don't know you because you clicked on this or just automatically played that happens a lot on youtube i'm a little bit gross i just got home from a flight i graduated yesterday so i flew to arizona to graduate um it was my first and last time seeing my campus it's kind of weird i'm an online student i was an online student because i am done <laughs> um, i noticed that Home videos seem to resonate with my subscribers more than other types of videos, so I figured let's do more home video content. Am I right? Comment and let me know if I'm right or not, because if you like certain types of videos, um, I will do them for you. I don't have school anymore. I have so much more time on my hands. I thought an interesting topic would be talking about how to make your home look more expensive than it actually is. I did a video about how to affordably furnish your home. That is on my channel if you want to snoop through and check it out. Some people were a little bit like, this isn't affordable, you should go to thrift stores and stuff. I love thrift stores, I'm all about them. But I was talking like, you know, big furniture items, um, new furniture, affordable, relatively speaking, if you're buying new stuff. But I also have little tips and tricks for how to use things you might already have around your home and make things just look better and more expensive. A couple things before I show you around and give you tips. Um, also, side note, I had an allergic reaction on my neck and that's the only reason I'm wearing this scarf is to um, hide this this blatant line of, of allergicness. <laughs> note to self, if you put Retin-A on your face, don't put a lot of it on your neck the first time you put it on your neck. Your neck doesn't like it. Speaking of, I should do a skincare routine video and that can be part of it. <laughs> a couple general basic tips to making your home look more expensive. First and foremost is keeping it clean. I know that's pretty obvious. Um, it kind of goes without saying, but I don't mean just picked up. I mean actually clean. You don't really realize how much dust and things around the house makes an impression on yourself and on people. There's something about a really well cleaned house and sometimes you can't put your finger on why this house feels so nice. And it's just the fact that it's spotless. So deep cleaning your home at least once a week definitely makes your home feel nicer and more expensive. Wealthy people that can like afford people to clean their house, I'm sure always have a spotless house. I just put hours into my house every week, but I love it. It's a good stress reliever. Second is hiding clutter. I will show you some of the ways I hide clutter because when the only things you can see out and about are beautiful decor items, or if you've turned useful things into decor, your house just looks so much better. People don't wanna see your, your medication sitting on your bedside table or things like that. Let's hide that away. We don't need that out. We can just tuck it away. Last but not least, this is a tip that might not really be a tip, but plants, in my opinion, this is an opinionated tip. Plants make houses feel better. They're alive. You have to be responsible to keep them alive. Something about that is impressive when you have real plants everywhere. Actually, I think that guy needs water. He's looking a little bit sad. Uh -huh. Something about having live living things in your home makes it feel more welcoming and cozy and like I said, expensive. So with that, I'm gonna show you around and show you some things that I have done to make this house look like I have uh, more finances than I do. Let's be honest, I'm an actress. Don't got a lot of money. One little luxury, I feel like making a house feel expensive really just boils down to little luxuries that aren't expensive necessarily, but are just, I don't know, adult-like or above and beyond. One is nice hand towels. This is a um, very inexpensive hand towel, but the material and the fabric, it looks just very modern and chic, and so I like to drape it over my oven. And something about that just warms up the space, makes it feel, you know, a little nicer. Another tip I have for you is buying cookware, like cooking utensils that are uniform. I have ugly cooking utensils in a drawer that I use all the time, but these I use too, but I bought them just to display them. I got all of these wooden cooking utensils for $4 at Marshall's, and then these are all matching and have this cool little copper base. Those were all from Marshall's too. I think I got all of them for like 6 or $8, and I put them in this vase together. It's just like, ah, everything is, uniform and looks good and I like it. 
A thing I have noticed with a lot of millennial kitchens is people like to use the top of their fridge for storage. Totally fair. I do that too. Any storage is good storage. I'm all about storage. But people just put like their cereal boxes up there or their protein powder or whatever they can. I feel like that typically makes a home look less put together. So what I have done is put these little storage baskets on top of my fridge. They actually tuck back and I store all the random crap that doesn't have a place in there. And from a distance, it looks much more uniform and sophisticated than cereal boxes. I hope you're ready because this one is a tip tip. It is like a tip. So in my shower, I have these very nice extensive shampoo and conditioners. Or do I? No, I don't. I bought the shampoo and conditioner. It's a nice brand. Once at Marshall's on sale. And now I refill it with drugstore shampoo and conditioner. I have something embarrassing to admit. I have registered for two bottles of Aesop soap on my registry. Aesop, if you don't know it, they're a super cute brand. Every time, every time you see a kitchen or a bathroom in a magazine, it has Aesop soap on the counter. And I registered for two of them, not necessarily for the soap, but just so I can keep reusing the bottle. I also have Googled a few times if anybody is selling their empty Aesop bottles online. I'd be a little too desperate, but <laughs> having your maybe not aesthetically pleasing products in an aesthetically pleasing bottle really makes things look nicer. I mean, just like pretty packaging makes a difference, you know? Okay, another kind of embarrassing tip and trick. Don't judge me for these. I'm trying to help you out, okay? Um, if you can't afford art, art to me is either expensive or if you buy it at places like Marshalls or Ross or whatever, it's not my taste. I feel like sometimes it's tacky. So, I mean, quality art, beautiful. Love it, pricey. So, um, this is an example. I bought this at Target. This is a picture frame, and the picture inside of it was just the sample picture that came in the frame. I bought it for the picture. I was like, that's really cool and abstract and modern, and it's a free piece of paper that comes in a frame, but I bought it to keep that in there. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. A lot of times, especially Target, Target's really good about putting cute art in the frames to showcase their frames, and then I buy it. How sophisticated. Also, I always feel like putting a little like plant in front of a piece of art just says, yes. <laughs> and another tip for you, I have so many of these things. Every time I pass one of these like glass and gold boxes, I get it because it turns things that you need to access frequently or that you enjoy or need to store into art and decor. You might have seen these when I made my um, divide a studio video, but I keep sunglasses in here, jewelry in here. I have these all around the house. I think I have four or five of these. And to me, it makes the stuff in them look very purposeful and pretty, and I'm just about it. Okay, another tip comes to bedding. I have come to find out about myself that my style changes too frequently to buy patterned bedding. Um, also, I would spend a lot of money at places like Urban Outfitters on patterned bedding, and something about the way the pattern was printed made it look cheap. I ended up getting an $18 duvet cover that also came with shams from Amazon. Shop local if you can, but let's be honest, Amazon also kind of rocks. Um, and it just makes my bed look so sophisticated. I will admit, the duvet on my bed currently is a new one that I got as a wedding present. It was quite a bit more expensive, but it has the same effect. Something about just a white, clean, crisp bed says very hotel, very sophisticated. Who cares what the thread count is? It doesn't matter. It just looks sophisticated and expensive. Like, like you're at a five-star hotel. These are actually the um, shams that came with the duvet. So you can see that was the material. That's what the whole duvet was like. And I love it. Another couple of tips, buying beautiful books and displaying them around your home like they're art is a win-win situation. You could stack things on top of them. They look very aesthetically pleasing and you can read them. Like there's a cookbook peeping out there. Go watch my studio tour that I posted last week. You will see little stacks of books everywhere. I love getting pretty books. I actually, as a graduation present yesterday, got two different very aesthetically pleasing cookbooks. And I'm like, this is so on brand. People know me, people know I love this. 
If you have any tips or tricks for ways to use things around your house that you might already have or to purchase small little things that make your home look a little more sophisticated and expensive, let me know. I'm all about those budget tips. We can help each other out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't know if you've noticed, but I have been really good about responding to comments, so comment at me. Nice things, please. I get a lot of mean ones too. It's okay. I forgive you. <laughs> As long as we're friends. I will see you again very soon, I pinky promise. Okay, love you guys, bye.